Hello. And welcome back to part two. Today's video is part two to the previous video where we covered the John Bonet Ramsey case. If you have not seen that video or do not know all the details of this case, I will make sure to link it in this one. So today's video will be about all the theories that have been made about who killed Jean Benet Ramsey. Today's video will be soft-spoken for the first half and whispered, whispered for the last half. Today, I'll be doing a mixture of triggers for you. I'll start with some visual triggers for you. I love when people do this to the camera. It's the easiest to do while having have a mixture of that, the usual mic touching, um, when I go to whispering to you, there will not be any triggers. So we will keep the loudest parts for the first half. You may hear my water diffuser in the background. I hope that you suspects and theories of what happened. At the end of this video, I will tell you what I think happened, which personally I struggle with, because there is so much in this case that makes it very difficult to decide. Um, probably one of the many reasons why this case remains unsolved. So, today's video will be added to my true crime ASMR playlist, where you can find past and future videos in this series. If you like true crime and ASMR, I highly suggest hitting the like and subscribe buttons below. I upload in this series at least once a week and upload regular content like triggers and tingly ramble videos as well. So two videos a week until I feel manic and upload more than that. <laughs> so let's begin. So suspect number one, which is Probably the most, I think, popular subject. Suspect, not subject, but she was subject to a lot of just... I feel bad for this woman. <laughs> I feel like most people have assumed her as the culprit, and her name is... Patsy Ramsey was Jean Bonnet's mother and was suspe suspect number one for many years. Um, she was a suspect until touch DNA had been used to find the DNA under not only Jean Bonnet's nails, but her long johns and underwear as well. Many suspect her for accidentally killing her daughter in a fit of rage 
over a bedwetting accident that Patsy covered up soon after. Many around her, especially her friends and family, said that Patsy was devoted to her daughter and her success. Patsy wanted the absolute best and admired her daughter greatly. Despite this, several pieces of evidence suggest she may have been involved. It is speculated that after a bedwetting accident had occurred, Patsy, in a fit of rage, slammed the little girl's head against the side of a hard, blunt surface like a bathtub. Jean Benet's body was found with a rope around her neck, tightened by a homemade garrote that was determined to have been made out of a paintbrush taken from Patsy's paint kit that lay nearby. And if you are not familiar with a garrote, it is a tool used to very slowly kill somebody. Um, the rope would be wrapped around the neck and then around a piece of wood and the assailant would twist until it was tightened. And um, a very slow, um, brutal way to kill somebody. Now, also, the ransom note was written on Patsy's notepad in the home. The note also had a lot of verbiage from classic crime films, so it would be assumed that the person who wrote it was not familiar to crime. The ransom note was also the same amount of John Ramsey's Christmas bonus. Also, to begin with, handwriting experts during the 90s had said the letter looked similar to Patsy's handwriting. It would be re-examined later and those findings would be found inconclusive. A known detective in this case, Steve Thomas, would even go on to interview with Larry King in 2000 and would state he resigned due to believing Patsy was involved but the case had become such a debacle and continued to go nowhere. Now, tidbit. So many of these um, detectives in this case had resigned. It was all of them, most of them were primarily male, first of all, but most of them had resigned very quickly. Um, they just had pushed this crime in one direction. Um, I had in my previous video pointed out how around this time the O.J. Simpson case was either right before or during, I can't remember that part, but it was around this time, along with the crime that involved Susan Smith, who had killed both of her children. So America really was not trusting anybody. Um, Susan Smith had gaslit an entire nation into believing that her children had been stolen when she had actually killed them. So, America was not... I feel like social media at that time had really just pushed everybody to suspect the mother. That it must have been the mother. Um, our next suspect is John Ramsey, 
who is the father of Jean Bonnet. On Christmas Day, Linda Arndt, the first police officer on the scene, would look around the house and find nothing. She would then send John and his neighbor, Fleet White, to search the home. It is said that John Ramsey would make a beeline straight for the basement cellar, where he immediately found his deceased child. Although John had been told to leave everything where he found it, John picked up his daughter, removed the tape on her mouth, and carried her upstairs. He would cover her with a throw blanket, destroying vital evidence. Arndt started to feel that perhaps John knew too much. Arndt made it no secret her suspicions. She would go on to ABC News and would say she felt as if John would be able to kill and she had counted the bullets in her gun multiple times just in case she needed to use them. Arndt would then claim to hear John planning to fly the family to Atlanta only hours after the murder. Innuendos of sexual abuse began to circulate, though no evidence was ever found to prove the allegations. John was exonerated with his late wife Patsy in 2008, once touch DNA testing cleared them. Which I do not believe that clears him. I don't. <laughs> we'll talk more after, but I don't believe that that's correct. So, our next suspect is Burke. Ramsey, the older brother of Jean Benet Ramsey. Patsy and John would diligently shield him from the press for years after the murder. Even with being exonerated along with his parents in 2008, He would go on to do the Dr. Phil show. The interview did him no favors, however. The 29-year-old software developer would creepily grin throughout Dr. Phil's line of questioning that ran down the chain of events leading up to the murder of his little sister. And he did look creepy in this interview. If you are so inclined, I do recommend to watch this interview. He remind me of his daddy. That's all I'm gonna say. They both, they both freak me out. They're... I think Patsy was the only one who seemed genuinely like those two, though, I don't Yeah. Anyway. So, on the Dr. Phil show, they would go down the chain of events leading up to the murder of Jean Bonnet. Many documentaries would come out soon um, after this interview, and many would bring the spotlight to Burke. CBS would make their own theory against Burke in collaboration with famed forensic investigator Werner Spitz. Werner would spot a flashlight on the kitchen counter, which he claimed fit perfectly in the gash in Jean Bonnet's skull. It is also alleged that the siblings had fought over a nighttime snack of pineapple. Um, they think that Burke hit her over the head with a flashlight and killed her. Pineapple was found in her stomach. So that night they had gotten home late from a party. 
Um, they think that um, the pineapple it was undigested in her stomach, so she died not very long after this. Just, um, I personally. The thing with Burke, you could think that he was sexually assaulting her, his little sister. I could see some anger about, I mean, he was born before Jean Benet, and yet Jean Benet Patricia Ramsey. She was named not only after her father, but her mother as well. And then you got Burke. Um, the theory of him possibly being involved and possibly John and a neighbor frantically covering it and not telling Patsy because Jean Benet was obviously her entire world because Patsy had cancer. She had stage 4 cancer at that and she was always with Jean Benet, going to these pageants. I could see some anger in Burke's, in him doing what he could to defile her and then accidentally murdering her out of rage. That could be a theory as well. Um, despite all of the um, claims being made that Burke had been involved, um, Burke would fire back at this. Despite being in so many documentaries at this time, and all of them claiming that Burke was behind the death of his sister, Burke would retaliate against CBS and would file a $150 million lawsuit against the forensic an analyst. Spitz that CBS had hired for their documentaries. Um, he had filed the lawsuit against him for potentially defamatory statements made against him. So, and you do not hear anything from Burke after this. Um, John Ramsey has gone on to do a lot of interviews. Um, he did a very famous one with, um, on ABC, which was interesting. <laughs> but anyway, that is it for the Ramsey family. Next up is John Mark Carr. John Mark Carr, who in 2006 confessed to the murder of John. Her 
time, there are so many accounts of Patsy and John's infidelities. Patsy was actively cheating with her cancer doctor at the time, and John was as well, allegedly. This crime was a crime of passion. Now when I say crime of passion, crimes of passion are the most brutal. They have more than a motive, they have emotions that are driving it. Um, Jean Benet was strangled slowly, molested before she was murdered as well. And then, after she had been murdered and strangled, she was hit so hard in the back of her head, it collapsed. They would also find other, like, red dot marks on her neck that were similar to a taser, although they could never confirm what made the marks. I believe the Ramses were involved, specifically John. I did tell you my theory about Burke, but we're gonna stick to John, because he is the one that I have no doubts. With Burke, I do have my doubts. Um, he could have just been a little kid at the time, and just had just lost his sister in a very brutal way. But John, I do not have any doubts. I don't. I, the motive for him, or how it played out, is a little, I'm back and forth on that, but I know that he was involved. There are no doubts for me. I do not believe Patsy killed her daughter or had anything to do with it. Um, it's just the motive for John that I really do stumble in this case, and I think anyone would because all of us cannot wrap our heads around the fact that someone could kill a child, especially this brutally. But anyway, I think 
John had hired someone to maybe fake a kidnapping. The Ramses had very lavish parties, very lavish um, lifestyle, and they would record home videos, and the ones that were released to the public, it just gives that reality TV show vibe. I do think the family wanted notoriety, especially for Jean Benet. I think that maybe John had hired someone to maybe fake a kidnapping and Jean Benet was returned dead because it's clear that John knew where Jean Benet was. You don't take a beeline to your cellar. Um, I think if I was in that, I would be looking upstairs in the closets and things like that. He went right to where she was. Um, I don't like the thought that he had been molesting her, but I do believe that could be a possibility. And I think him and his friend, who was also a neighbor, the Fleet White, assisted in searching the home and finding Chambonet, those would be my men to talk to. I'd be speaking to them first. Um, I think the focus on the bedwetting and Patsy was a complete waste of time. I think John really was trying to frame his wife, um, but we'll break down evidence now. And that is why I believe she was being framed. It's been said by many people, many, 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 that the couple were having affairs. Now, I think that John saw he had no way out of his marriage. And it was clear that Jean Benet was Patsy's pride and joy. That was her whole world. And I'm sure John knew that Patsy would make so much money from the divorce and probably would take the children as well. Plus, he seemed like a man who really was interested in what others thought of him. And I don't think it would look good divorcing your wife who was diagnosed with stage four cancer. So I think he had his own obsessions with his daughter. Wanted either to bring her fame and boost her career, and saw an opportunity to frame his wife, and it just ended up being a opportune moment for him. Or he was sexually assaulting her. And this time, Jean Benet had enough and probably knew herself it would be over when she told Patsy. Now, evidence specifically. To me, it seemed that the entire crime scene and things found were all pointed to Patsy. But doesn't that seem too easy? All the evidence seems rushed, and the family had enough time to take their time covering this if it was Patsy. She's the one who called. She was the one who woke up first. It was her call if she was involved. And if you had murdered your child, you must make damn sure you have nothing to link you. Like, she had seen the news at this time. People were more into the news than I really do think they are now. So she knew about the world at that time. She would have covered herself better than that, I believe. I just... You wouldn't leave the evidence there, especially for the tool you used to strangle her daughter. Then the notepad 
where the note was written. It just, it took too long for someone to sit there and write it. I just believe, at the very least, John Ramsey was involved to frame his wife in the hopes he could carry on with his mistress or keep his money um, and had asked for the help of a friend to assist in the act. So, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear your opinions in the comments below. That is today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it relaxing. I took a little longer with this video to upload it because I wanted to make sure I did my research fully so I could give you a good theory of my own. I think if you really thought into this case, multiple theories would happen because we just don't know and I really do think John knows more personally. And when they had interviewed them, they interviewed Patsy for six hours and John for three. Anyway. <sighs> I find that social media kind of skews our judgment a little bit. So make sure when you are looking into two crime cases, Check your sources. Make sure you're not getting just pure opinion with no facts. I'm open to the fact that I have the possibility to be wrong. I don't state my opinions to you as fact because they are not. They are my opinions. The facts that I give to you are that. They are facts. Not what I think. Fact. I just hope this um, lets you know that I do the work for you in these videos. You can trust my information and um, I just thank you so much for stopping in and taking the time to relax. Thank you all. Do have subscribed and hang out with me for every video I post. I appreciate it very much and I'm thankful for you. And all the time you take for yourself. Please be selfish with your time, your energy. Think of yourself. Um, it is nice to think of others, but at least once a day, I want you to think for yourself. Think of what you need and just make sure you are Spooky dreams. <laughs>